Dear all, Namaste. Today I shall be discussing on Styralgia or Eagles Syndrome or Elongated Styloid Process. Eagles Syndrome is a condition which is characterized by recurrent pain in the oropharynx and face due to an elongated styloid process or calcified styrohyoid ligament. This condition was described by Watt Weems Eagle in 1937. The normal length of steroid process is around 25 mm. Length up to 30 mm does not cause much of the problems, but when the length is more than 30 mm in size, it is considered as elongated steroid process. Most of the times it is seen on radiography, either in CT scan or in X-ray. Sometimes increased angulation of the steroid process, both anteriorly as well as medially, can also cause pain because this can press on the tonsillar fossa and the glossophyngeal nerve gets irritated. Around 5-10% of patients with elongated SRI process have pain. It is commonly seen in females over 40 years of age. It can happen equally in males also over 40 years of age. This syndrome can be classified into two types. One is classical type, which occurs several years after tonsillectomy, and that presents as foreign body sensation in throat, difficulty in swallowing or dysphagia, dull pharyngeal pain on swallowing, rotation of neck or protrusion of tongue, and patient also might have peripheralgia. Therefore, when the patient presents many years after translectomy with non-specific throat pain and foreign body sensation in throat with difficulty in swallowing and all non-specific features of throat pain, we have to think of classical type of Eagle syndrome. It usually happens due to scar tissue in the tonsillar fossa that engulfs the branches of glossophyngeal nerve. So this is due to scarring in classical type after many years after tonsillectomy. The next is carotid artery syndrome that presents as a sequelae of head or neck trauma and usually happens due to carotid artery compression by styloid process. So this is vascular type that leads to carotidynia, headache and dizziness. Therefore, not only throat pain signifies elongated steroid process, but also in the patient having headache as well as dizziness, patient might present with elongated steroid process. When the external carotid artery is involved, patient will have neck pain that radiates to eye, ear, mandible, palate, and nose. When the internal carotid artery gets involved, the patient will have parietal headache and pain along the ophthalmic artery. Therefore, when the patient has dull aching pain in the face, or when the patient is having headache also, we have to think of elongated steroid process of carotid artery type. You can see here, the normal steroid process it is a bone coming out from the skull base downwards. You can see here the steroid process. And this is the steroid process here. These are the two steroid processes you can see in the arrows. This picture shows the elongated steroid processes, which is long and calcified is the calcified styrohyoid ligament. Here you can see long and sharp styroid process, which is that presses upon the tonsillar fossa. Now let's come to the theories of ossification of the styrohyoid ligament. So the cause might be reactive hyperplasia when trauma leads to ossification of fibrocartilaginous remnants in the styrohyoid ligament. Sometimes reactive metaplasia also due to abnormal post-traumatic healing which leads to calcification of the styrohyoid ligament. Therefore, there might be trauma plus abnormal post-traumatic healing that leads to calcification. When the patient gets old, there will be loss of elasticity of the styrohyoid ligament that also leads to ossification. And occasionally, ossification might happen as in normal anatomical variant. What are the theories of pain in styralgia? They are most common causes irritation of the glossophyngeal nerve. This usually presents as glossopharyngeal neuralgia. Next is irritation of sympathetic nerve plexus around the internal carotid artery that will lead to pain. And next is inflammation of styrohyoid ligament and stressing of the overlying pharyngeal mucosa by the elongated styrohyoid process that compresses on or presses on the tonsil. How to diagnose styralgia? You know the patient presents with most of the non-specific complaints, but as the patient complains of pain or dysphagia or irritation in throat or non-specific throat pain, 
we have to palpate on the transverse fossa. So if we can feel a bony structure over there, we have to think of steroid process in the transverse fossa. So if we press in transverse fossa and person has similar pain, then we think that person is having elongated steroid process, compression on the pharynx or in the transverse fossa leading to pain. When we inject 2% xylocaine solution into the transverse fossa, patients should have relief of pain. Then we have to think of pressure due to elongated steroid process because as you know, lignocaine or xylocaine is the anesthetic solution. X-ray neck lateral view, orthopendomogram, coronal CT scan, all of these will show elongated steroid process and in computer we can read the length of steroid process. 3D reconstruction of the CT scan is called can tell either the elongated steroid process or ossified style hyoid ligament. So, 3D reconstruction of CT scan skull is the best investigation of choice on elongated steroid process. You can see here X3 neck lateral view for steroid process. You can see the steroid process here, this seen over here, and you can see the steroid process on orthopentomogram. Coronal CT scan per se is the most important investigation of choice when the patient is having elongated steroid process. You can see the steroid process coming out from the skull base down to the oropharynx. So this is probably ossified steroid hyoid ligament. 3D CT is the is a good choice. You can see here whole length of the steroid process and course of the steroid process. After diagnosis, we have to treat the symptoms caused by elongated steroid process. Let's come to medical treatment. Oral analgesics to decrease the pain. Injection of steroid plus 2% lignocaine into the transverse fossa gives temporary relief. It won't give the permanent relief. Carbamazepine, 100 to 200 mg three times a day is a good choice on treatment of elongated steroid process, but it is mostly not given in elderly individuals. It might lead to dizziness or increased sleep. Gabapentin or pregabalin also can be given in cases of symptoms caused by elongated steroid process. The medicines have to be given for at least two to three months for good relief. When the patient does not get relief by use of medications, then surgery has to be performed and surgical intervention is reserved for the patients with failed medical management for at least three months or severe or rapidly progressing symptoms. When the patient feels very difficult with the daily activities, then we have to treat the patient surgically. The surgical treatment for steroid process, excision of the steroid process, which can be performed either by intraoral route or by extraoral route, intraoral through transfer fossa, there will be no external scarring. There shall be poor visibility due to difficult access because we are having short access to the steroid process. There might be high risk of damage to internal carotid artery if the proper care is not taken. And there might be iatrogenic glossopharyngeal nerve injury, which again might lead to irritation of the neck. There might be high risk of deep neck space infection because we are going to the paraphyngeal space. In this slide, you can see tonsillectomy and fossa incision. This is the tonsil and tonsillectomy has been performed here and the fossa is incised. To look for the elongated steroid process, first we have to uh, palpate there and find out the steroid process. And then, as you see the steroid process here, the process has been visualized. We will just cut the steroid process with the special scissors or bone cutters. The technique is tonsillectomy is performed and steroid process is palpated. Incision is made in tonsillar fossa. During surgery, tonsillectomy is done and steroid process is palpated. Incision is made in the tonsillar fossa just over the keep of the steroid process. Steroid attachments are elevated till its base with the periosteal elevator. Then, steroid process is broken near its base with bone nibbler, avoiding injury to glossopharyngeal nerve. As we have already told, the glossopharyngeal nerve might be damaged during the surgery, which again will lead to glossopharyngeal neuralgia, mm -hmm. and the transverse fossa incision is closed. You can see here, tonsil, this is a tonsil. The tonsil has been removed and the fossa is incised in this manner. Then, steroid process is palpated, and you can find out the steroid process here. 
the steroid process is excised with the bone cutter or bone nibbler on its base. The elongated portion is removed. You can see here we are cutting the elongated steroid process. And after that, the wound is closed. Steroid process can be excised from the extra oral root through the neck. In this technique, the incision extends from the masseter process along the sternocleal masseter muscle to the level of hyoid bone and across the neck up to the midline of the chin. This is the incision, which is marked green here. The advantage of this incision is it gives a better exposure for the steroid process and it is less morbid. Patient can take oral foods from the second or first post operative day, but only problem is it gives an external scar. So, the external incision might not be liked by many females due to a scar, but it's a better route than per oral approach for the steroid process. Per oral approach gives the lesser exposure for the tonsillar bed and the steroid process. So, complications might happen more with the intraoral route than the extraoral route, which is done by direct visualization of the structures. Thank you so much. This is an important question to be asked in practicals as well as in theory, ENT. And more than that, this is a very, very commonly encountered situation in your private practice. When the patient comes to you with non specific throat pain, then ask for the CT scan or X ray for the steroid process. If the steroid process is long, then you can counsel the patient for surgery. But don't forget to tell that even after surgery, patient might not feel good in around 40% of the cases. Therefore, overall success of surgery for the steroid process excision is around 40% only. Patient only have non-specific throat pain in the future also. Thank you.